let's solve a couple of these really basic torque problems first. So remember, torque is F times R times sine theta, right? So this first one is pretty simple. So it's just F is 100 newtons, and your R, remember R is the distance from the rotation point out to where the force is applied. So that's R, so you get the whole three meters. And we don't need sine theta because the angle between the two vectors, right, between the F and the R vector is 90 degrees. And we know, hopefully, that the sine of 90 is 1. So there's no point in multiplying by 1. So to get the torque, it's just F times R. So that's 100 times 3, which is 300 newtons times meters. Okay, so what about if there's an angle? So... Here, when there's an angle, the whole point of using this sign is because here's my R, right? But if I draw my force down like this, right, the plane that F and R act perpendicular to is actually here. So this is R, but this is the part of R that is perpendicular and makes a 90 degree angle, right? And if that's 30 degrees, that's 30 degrees, right? Because geometry and if I want to know how long this side is, this is going to be r sine theta, right? That's the point of using the sine theta in the equation. It tells you how much is actually perpendicular to the force vector, okay? So I don't need to do anything special. I just need to multiply my values. So the torque is fr sine theta, right? So that's going to be f is 50 newtons times r, which is 1 meter, times the sine of 30 so if you put that in your calculator, 50 times sine 30 gives you 25. I don't need to multiply by 1, right? Because I know what 50 times 1 is. So that's 25 Newton meters. All right. So what about something like this? Same concept, right? So here's my force. Here's the, the line it acts on. So R even though this is R, this is the part of R where they're perpendicular, right? So if this is R, this is R sine theta. And theta is 40 degrees, right? So 40 sine is opposite, right? That's why I'm using sine. Makes it easy. So torque is FR sine theta, right? So the force is 90 times R is 4, right? times 4 times sine of 40 degrees. And if you do that, so 90 times 4 times sine of 40 degrees gives me 231.4 Newton meters. Okay, so what about something like this where I'm trying to find the net torque around this point O? All right, so... When you're trying to find the net torque around a point, I need to sum all my things making it turn clockwise versus all my things making it turn counterclockwise, right? So I'm going to start with the clockwise stuff. So this one is making it turn clockwise, right? There's a torque turning it right there. So I'm going to say this is 450 times R is 1.5 times the sine of my angle from there, right? Because I want the angle that's perpendicular. So if that's 30 degrees, that means this is 60 degrees because I need the angle from the surface of the where R is, right? So this is going to be 60 degrees. So that is 584.56. So there's that much turning this clockwise. Okay, so now let's do counterclockwise. So there's only one, right? So this is easy, so I can just take the two and subtract. So this one is doing 90 degrees, right? 90 degrees from R, so I don't need to use sine. So I'll just say it's F times R. So that's 200 times R. So that's 2 meters plus 1.5. So that's 3.5 meters. So 200 times 3.5, right? I should just do it in my head, but I'm lazy. 700. So the net torque is going to be 700 minus 
584.56. And when you do that, you get 115.43. So that's my net torque in this case. Okay, how about a torque balance one? So what must be M so it balances? So we've done stuff like this. We've done a lot of stuff like this, right? So you're basically balancing all the torques on one side equals the other side, right? This is a balance problem, so just set the two sides equal. So on this side, I have one kilogram at 100 centimeters. And again, here, because I'm trying to figure out it balancing, if torque is R times F, I don't need to convert to newtons because I'm just going to end up converting back to kilograms, so there's no point in doing it. I don't need to convert to meters because I'm just going to end up converting back. It doesn't make any difference, right? When you're doing a balance problem, it's just ratios. So that's 100 times 1 on this side. And on the other side, oh no, I almost got fooled. That's 50 centimeters. So my torque is actually 50 times 1. See, even I go too fast sometimes. So 50, that's 12 and a half. So that means the distance is 38, 37 and a half, right? So this is 37 and a half times m. So now I can just solve. So 50 times 1 is 50. So 50 divided by 37 and a half is going to be my mass. So 50 divided by 37.5, 1.33. 1.33 and I left it in kilograms, so it's gonna be kilograms. Last problem, we're gonna calculate the net torque about the axle of the wheel. So the axle of the wheel is right there, right? So to get the net torque, I really just have to look at how much torque I have going that way and compare it to how much torque I have going that way and then find the difference between the two and that'll tell me the net, right? Because if they were balanced, the net would be zero. So let's look at all the clockwise torques first. So my clockwise torques are going to be anything that's making it rotate this way, right? So here, that force is going to make it rotate that way. And then this one also is going to make it rotate clockwise, right? This one is going the other way. So my clockwise torques are going to be this one, 35 times R, right? So 35 times my R is 12 centimeters, because see how it tells me that's 12 and that's 24 times 12. And... It gives me an angle, right? So I have an angle between these two, but that don't let that throw you off. This isn't the angle between F and R. That's the angle between the application of these forces, right? R is here and F is here. That's 90 degrees. doesn't matter what this angle is. The angle between F and R is 90. Same thing here. The angle between R and F is 90. Same thing here. R, F, that's 90. So I'm not using the sign of the angle in any of these. Okay, so 35 times 12 centimeters plus 18 newtons times 24 centimeters, right? And that is going to be my clockwise torques, right? So let's do this. 35 times 12, 420, <laughs> 420 plus <laughs> 18 times 24 gives me 432. So 420 plus, I don't know why I'm doing this one. I could just add it in my head. It's 852. 852. Okay. And so let's do my counterclockwise torques now. So I, I should probably, because these are centimeters, right? So I should have two decimals back. So this is 8.52, right? Because this is in centimeters. I just moved the decimal back to. All right, so 0 0.12, 0 0.24, 0 0.20, 0 0.32, right? Okay, so counterclockwise is just this one. So 28 newtons times R, which is 24 centimeters, right? Because it's going to the outside, so I'll do this one right, 0.24. So 28 times 0.24 gives me 6.72, 6.72. So I have... 8.52 going clockwise, 6.72 going counterclockwise. You can tell immediately this one is larger, right? So my net torque is just going to be the difference. So 8.52 minus 6.72. My net torque is 1.8 newton meters, right? And it's in the 
clockwise direction.